Hello students. Today we shall discuss about our chapter number 16 that is natural disasters. In this chapter, we shall discuss about three major natural disasters which are earthquakes, volcanoes and tidal waves. Okay, so let's start. Natural disasters are unexpected events that take place naturally. We cannot say that the next earthquake is going to happen on that day or at that place. It's not possible for human and no one can predict accurately the date and place of the next natural disaster step that going to happen on our earth. That's why we called our natural disasters as an unexpected event. And obviously, as it is a natural disaster, so it takes place naturally. That is, no human activities are involved behind the occurrence of this type of natural disasters. And human beings have no control over them. That is, human cannot control the natural disasters. We can't create natural disasters. We can't stop any natural disasters. Human beings have no control over them. Earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, tidal waves are some examples of natural disasters. Name a natural disasters which occurred in or around your area recently. So, if we say about our area, then we can say that we only observed some minor earthquakes and for those minor earthquakes no such big damages occurred but an earthquake of higher intensity can damage so many things we will learn about those things later now earthquakes earthquakes are caused due to the sudden movement of a part of the earth crust against another here in this picture, this is our inner core, this is outer core, this is the mantle and the upper surface is our crust. We all know about it as it is discussed. Now we also know that on the mantle tectonic plates floats on which the crust is situated. So, as those tectonic plates are not stationary, they always float on the mantle. So, sometimes two nearby tectonic plates collide with each other in this way. So, it produces huge amount of energy which travels throughout the earth's surface and causes a huge damage. This is our earthquake. What we learned that earthquakes are caused due to the sudden movement of the part of the earth's crust against another. So this is one part of the earth's crust, this is another part of the earth's crust. They start to move and when they collide with each other, it produces earthquake. It can cause building to shake and crumble. Earthquakes cause a lot of damage to both life and property. The damage is strongest near the epicenter. Do you know what an epicenter is? Here in this picture, this is the place or point under the ground where an earthquake is generated. So this point of generation of an earthquake under the ground is known as focus or earthquake hypocenter and the point on the surface of the earth which is directly above this focus that is this point is known as epicenter of an earthquake. So what we can say epicenter is the point 
on the earth surface which is situated directly above the focus of an earthquake here in this picture you can see this is the focus and the point directly above this focus on the earth surface that is this point is known as epicenter of this earthquake so epicenter is the place where most of the damage takes place an earthquake begins at a point under the ground this point is called the focus and the spot on the surface that corresponds to the focus is called the epicenter so here corresponds means directly above that point in other words epicenter is the point on the earth surface directly above the focus on an earthquake so we learn both next there was a massive earthquake in gujarat in 2001 its epicenter was bhuj so bhuj was the epicenter of the earthquake that occurred in gujarat in 2001 that was a massive earthquake faced by gujarat and smaller quakes or tremors may occur following a big quake these are called after shocks that is when an earthquake takes place after the end of an earthquake and another earthquake may occur this is called after shocks here in this picture what we learned still now that when the two tectonic plates overlap with each other it produces an earthquake after producing an earthquake they settle back to their original position that is from where they came this is called resettlement of tectonic plates so during the resettlement of these plates another earthquake may happen this is called after shocks so after shocks are caused when the rocks that had moved out due to an earthquake settle back to their place so earthquakes vary in intensity that is some earthquakes are mild and some are severe some are mild where as some are severe if an earthquake is of higher magnitude it causes severe damage and destruction to property that is if an earthquake occurred with higher intensity it may cause higher damages to lives to properties and to many natural things here due to a severe earthquake buildings collapse trees are uprooted and almost everything is destroyed so thousands of people lose their lives when an earthquake occurs under the sea it generally causes other natural disasters like tidal waves so tidal waves are the formation of big waves due to an earthquake which is produced inside the sea so it also can damage the environment landslides and fires to be result due to an earthquake so there are so many adverse effects of earthquake so here you can see these are the two pictures of damage made by an earthquake by this picture you can predict the level of destruction caused by the earthquake okay next measuring an earthquake so to distinguish to mild earthquake or to severe earthquake we must have to measure the level of intensity of an earthquake so to measure the intensity of an earthquake an instrument called seismograph is used so here the intensity of an earthquake is measured by an instrument called seismograph so here you can see that this is an instrument to measure an earthquake the name of this instrument is seismograph and you can see a scale is connected with it this is known as rotating drum and here by using this drum 
the intensity of an earthquake is measured okay so this is a graph which represents the intensity of an earthquake in this zone you can see that those peaks are smaller so it represents an earthquake of smaller amplitude or smaller intensities and here you can see the peaks are higher so it represents an earthquake of higher intensity so it can damage more than this type of earthquake okay the earthquake is generally measured on a scale named as Richter scale so here here you have to remember two things the instrument by which the intensity of an earthquake is measured is seismograph and the scale on which it is measured is called Richter scale next volcanoes so volcanoes are usually conical mountains built around a vent that is where the two tectonic plates joined together a mountain like a cone shape is formed through which the lava present inside our earth crust that is in mantle travels through a narrow hole and erupted and reaches the crust okay so a vent is a fissure in the earth crust through which molten lava and gases erupt that is through these volcanoes the lava and the gases present inside the earth crust erupt out so the magma erupted by a volcano comes from the earth's mantle and reaches the crust passing through cracks in the earth's crust here you also can find these are the cracks on the earth's crust so through these cracks the magma can comes out also by these mountains the magma can comes out okay so types of volcanoes on the basis of their nature volcanoes are of the following three types here nature means its activity that is there are some volcanoes which erupt regularly and also there are some volcanoes which do not erupt at all so according to their activeness of erupting these are divided into three different types one is active volcanoes second is dormant volcanoes and third is extinct volcanoes first active volcanoes so active volcanoes are the volcanoes which have erupted in the past they may erupt at any time in the present or future that is active volcanoes are the type of volcanoes which can erupt at any time some of the famous active volcanoes are mount fuji mount vesuvius and mount erebus so many active volcanoes are found around the pacific ocean the area around the pacific ocean is a zone of frequent earthquakes and volcanoes so it is shaped like a horseshoe and it is 40000 km long this area of zone is known as the pacific ring of fire first these are the pictures of some volcanoes and here is our pacific ocean and around this pacific ocean you can see a ring this is called pacific ring of fire in this zone you can find that so many volcanoes are present and this is the place where the earthquakes occur frequently so for this region this zone is known as pacific ring of fire and it is around 40000 km long and the shape of this pacific ring of fire is like a horse so so this is the end of today's class in our next class we shall discuss about dormant volcanoes extinct volcanoes and tidal waves